Planet Earth, home to over six billion people, all of whom have only one question on their minds. What's for dinner? This is the big world of food. I'm your host, Chef John Veronese. What do you know about hydroponics? Mm -hmm. I've seen it. I think it's growing plants in water, maybe? I know that it's growing plants in water as opposed to soil. But That's all I know, too. Hydroponics is the art of gardening without soil. You have the plants are literally in a little tube with holes in the tube. Hydroponics. I've always wanted to learn more about hydroponics, and today we're here at Grateful Greens to learn more about baby greens, micro sprouts, and we're going to learn how to grow some things to jazz up your dinner. Today I'm here at Grateful Greens with Greg Graff. He specializes in hydroponics, do everything from baby lettuces to microgreens. And Greg today is going to show us the process of hydroponics and beginning from seed to picking fresh leafy vegetables. How are you doing this afternoon, Greg? I'm doing wonderful. I'm uh, glad that you're all out to see us there. I want to kind of take you through the process of how we kind of take this uh, seed from uh, starting it all the way to the table where the, uh, you know, the restaurants are actually plating these things up. Uh, a real quick uh, idea about hydroponics. Hydroponics is just basically growing in water. Uh, we are using a sterile inert growing medium where the seed is just basically dropped down into this medium. This medium is nothing but an incubator for the seed. It, uh, once the root actually protrudes through this medium, it is being bathed by water and nutrients 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Therefore, this plant can really spend a lot of time and concentration on going, growing vegetatively relatively quickly as opposed to being grown in dirt where you're going to have to use a lot of uh, dirt to really kind of be a buffer around these roots. But I want to show you the product that we're using is called Oasis, uh, very similar to what a florist uses to put their flowers in. It holds about 20 times its weight in water. It is a sterile inert medium. Uh, the, the product that we're using actually is already pre-punched with holes to where we actually just drop our seeds right down into the holes and then we will actually feed water on the underneath side of the tray and it will ha actually have a wicking capacity and pull water up into the tray until we actually have a sprouted plant that actually can be taken out into the greenhouse. But John, I want to show you as far as uh, the simplic simplicity, we've got numerous growers that we deal with that use really high fancy, high tech fancy seeders and machines to do all their seeding. We probably use the most basic type of seeding there is uh, known. Uh, it's just a, what's called a dial seeder. Yeah, notice and all those it, little numbers on the, there. The numbers on there basically just represent how big the hole is. Most uh, lettuce seeds and herb seeds are fairly small, so we use kind of on the lower end of the dial. But what this allows us to do is to be able to actually have a fairly small opening, so when we actually fill the seeds in here, we just use our pointer finger to use as kind of a tamping method to tamp down into each one of these little holes. So just to give you an idea, say if we're actually seeding a product called red oak, uh, this is a variety called Garrison. We actually just take this cedar and just fill it up with the seed. We get it leveled out to where the dial, the top can actually go right back on top. And we usually start this out with about a number, number three, and that gives us just about a big enough opening to really be able to tamp this seed. And what we generally do is we'll start in the corner and we'll start in a tamping motion and we're looking to put about four to five seeds in each hole. Now we're not going to be perfect. We're not going to spend a ton of time going back. It's a little bit of a tedious process. A lot of little seeds and a lot of little holes. It can be, but I tell you, you know, over time, you know, people get a little bit used to, or get a little bit more used to actually doing this there. And if you've got some seeds that are floating on top of the trays, or if you drop more than five or six, uh, we're not going to stop and go back there. I mean, that's uh, what we're looking to do is really be able to create a nice, dense bunch of lettuces when these are sprouting. Uh, I can remember being in elementary school and having Fred Wishy come out. Uh, who is a local farmer and actually teach us how to start uh, seedlings before we put them out into the school's little garden. But we would actually just use a, the end of a pencil tip there and just drop each one of the little seeds individually into the, uh, the dirt. Now growing hydroponically is uh, there's, there's no dirt involved. This is uh, basically the roots are just dangling down in an oxygenated uh, fertilizer solution. 
Hydroponics, taken from the Greek word hydro for water and ponos for labor, is a method of growing plants using mineral nutrient solutions in water without soil. Terrestrial plants may be grown with their roots in mineral nutrient solutions only or in an inert medium such as gravel, mineral wool or coconut husk. To order or do you just grow to your maximum capacity? You know, that's a, a, a really good question. We basically, is, we've gotten into our new space there. We're kind of growing to order, but we're trying to learn, you know, what are the things as we approach spring that are, uh, the chefs and, and caterers and whatnot are going to be really looking for. So we try to get a good representation or kind of our base items that we keep around all the time. And then we're always looking for new things to grow and new ideas from, from people there. So we really try to stay on top of, uh, you know, if there's ideas that the chefs are really looking to do with uh, new menus and uh, we're, very, we're very open for, for growing new items. Well, that's really neat too, especially if I'm looking for something especially in my kitchen. I just say, hey Greg, I'm looking for something like this. And it is. You and can it, find the seed and start it all off here. And, and absolutely fun for me as a grower there. I mean, I absolutely love to grow there, but when I can go to somebody and say, uh, okay, you've got a party for say maybe 100 people there and you want to specially just do one particular item at a certain size to where you can actually just plate this up, I can say, okay, give me four weeks and we'll take this from seed to being ready to be done and delivered to your doorstep to where you're literally got a product that's only 24 hours old from growing to when the consumer is actually eating this. And they actually, the chef knows where this product is coming from all the way up to the server who's actually presenting this to the table there. So it actually has a great uh, That's great really story. exceptional to have a grower cater to the chef and get exactly what you're looking for to execute the perfect dinner. It is, and it's fun for me. I mean, I, it comes back to, you know, the, and the end, end result there, the chef likes it there. You know, hopefully the, the table that's ordering the product there loves, you know, what they've gotten there. But for me, you know, it's a satisfaction that I can four weeks before this ever even takes place, that we've actually got this in the process there and be able to deliver that uh, whenever, when it's needed. Well, Greg, what is the next step of the process once we get all the seeds in here? What do we do next? Well, our next step is to come in and actually water the trays in to where they're actually saturated and then we'll actually move over to our nursery space where we actually set these up on heat mats so we can go ahead and head on over there and I'll show you uh, the process of how we go into this next step. All right, great. Let's check it out. Stay tuned because when we return, John gets a tour of the fascinating greenhouse at Grateful Greens. Take your taste buds on a tour of Kentucky. It's a lot of fun. Watch Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs with host Tim Laird, Saturday nights at 10.30 on WBKI. Tune in to The Barbara Bryant Show, weekday mornings at 6.30 on WBKI, CW7. Veronese, eclectic contemporary Mediterranean cuisine, extensive wine list, four seasons patio, exciting atmosphere, fresh Kentucky proud local ingredients, vegetarian friendly, live jazz seven nights a week. For more information, call 502-899-9904. Veronese, 2106 Historic Frankfurt Avenue. Today we're here with Dwayne Andrews Sullivan University's culinary art students. How are you doing this afternoon, Dwayne? Very good. All right. So where are you from? I'm from Barstown, Kentucky. Barstown, not too far away. Uh, not really. So what brings you to Sullivan University? Why did you choose to go to school here? Uh, well, they gave me a good opportunity to uh, learn how to cook and become a chef and everything. And they gave me the opportunity to uh, get used to a kitchen and things like that, and make sure I know what I was doing when I went. So did you uh, always know that you wanted to, to be a chef? Is this a better yeah, dream pretty, of yours? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, when I was little, I always, I, I couldn't, my mom couldn't get me to watch cartoons. I always watched Food Network when I was little, so yeah, pretty much. You, were you her little sous chef in the kitchen helping yeah. her out? Yeah, pretty much. It was, I always used to get in trouble because I would be in the way, but you know. <laughs> well, it's going to pay off. Yeah. So what do you like the most about Sullivan University? Um, I just like the way, um, it's not like a whole bunch of kids that like one chef, you know. You can get personal attention by the chefs. And uh, it just gives you a good, a good presentation and stuff to how you're going to be when you go out into the work job, in the workplace, and get a job as a chef in the kitchens and stuff. You get used to how the kitchens are set up. So that's that's great. It's good to have that one-on-one -on -one, uh, teaching to help hone your skills yeah. and everything. Well, what do you think that you're going to bring out of this in your career in the future? What do you think Sullivan's going to teach you the most? Um, pretty much just to make sure food's good food is cooked good for good quality, good eating, and uh, make sure nobody gets anything bad or anything like that. 
and uh, let me to help just, you know, boost the economy some, you know, put something out there that people want to do, people want to go to, so people have something to do. Excellent. Where are you in your culinary program here, Solomon? Uh, I'm in my first quarter right now. Right. So, yeah, I just started. Well, you have a lot ahead of you. Oh, yeah. Well, what kind of plans do you have when you graduate from Solomon? What would you um, like to do? Probably come back for my bachelor's and hopefully eventually get my master's and open my own restaurant. But uh, right now I'm just trying to get through it. Excellent. You know, there's never too much learning that you can do and, you know, to, to encase all the facets of culinary. So yeah. you really want your own restaurant. You know all the hard work it takes to put yeah, in there. Huh? There's, yeah, I've been asking around. They told me it takes a whole lot of hard work, but I figure I'll put it in. I can tell you from my experience, long days, long hours, yeah. but you got to enjoy what you do. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dwayne. Here we have Dwayne Andrews, another future chef here from Sullivan University. Interested in a career in hospitality? Give us a call at 502-456-6505 or check us out at Sullivan.edu. How to Buy brought to you by Creation Gardens. Reminding you that dining out makes you happy, so let's start smiling again. As a chef, I love to use microgreens in my restaurant. I use them in salads, I use them for garnish. And today, Chef Cray at Creation Gardens is gonna give us some healthy tips of how to purchase these greens. Well, sure, Don. Here we have uh, local flowers. This is a local edible flower. Um, this is a purple orchid. These are actually grown in Thailand. Um, uh, this is a cut microgreen. With these, you wanna look for a nice, fresh texture to make sure there's no wilting or, or um, you know, signs of spoilage at all. Um, but these, these are all living microgreens. And these are all raised local here? These are all grown locally. We have radishes and collards, uh, kale greens, beets and mizuna. All these are gonna taste reminiscent of the grown-up version, just a little more intense. Uh, and lastly, this is my favorite. This is a, a locally grown snow pea sprout. And these are delicious raw. You can eat them by themselves as a little salad or just use them as a garnish on your entree. All right, well, these are some beautiful greens. We have radishes here, collard greens, and beets, and mizuna. They're very pretty, and I love to eat these greens here beautiful and have great taste still. Craig, thank you for giving us some wonderful tips of how to buy today. You pluck it out of the water and it's in your mouth and it's crispy and it's there's no wilting, no downtime. Pick it and cook it, absolutely. Hydroponics. John, we're stepping over to the, uh, the next stage in the process there. We just kind of left the seeding area to where we actually seed the uh, material, the oasis. Uh, these have already been watered in from the top and are saturated. Now we bring these over to what we consider our nursery area, and they are actually sitting on a heat mat uh, that stays at approximately 76 degrees. Oh, that's nice and, and this warm. allows for a proper germination rate for all the varieties that we're growing. And we're also making sure that we have even consistency of moisture in this pad. We will water these in daily uh, from underneath so they actually have a, a wicking capability of so the moisture. So you just fill this up with some water? We do. We put about uh, 32 ounces of water on the underneath side of this tray daily. I like how everything's so exact. Yeah, so, I mean, that allows us to basically keep track of everything that we're doing on a daily basis. We do it the exact same way every day. We have a good amount of moisture coming up. We keep this at the same temperature. It's dialed in. We've got thermometers. They're all these taking readings in here. And then we allow the, the process of the plant just to kind of do its thing. Uh, they're sitting under 18 hours of light a day. We're using a 1,000 watt metal halide bulb that basically keeps a good amount of light. We're also using a fan to keep a lot of air blowing through this area because it allows us it's a, a two-fold process that actually keeps a good air moving around the plant. Also, it keeps to have a much healthier stem and keeps a much shorter stature plant as opposed to something becoming really tall and lanky because if it's tall and lanky and goes out in the greenhouse, that product will never grow the way it's supposed to grow. So, so this, the, the, the wind is kind of natural outside and it helps build the strength of the it plant? It does. It really kind of helps bring the, uh, the, the, the strength of the, the stem so that plant can really grow up and be really like tight and really short stature as opposed to being really elongated and looking like really kind of lanky and uh, not the best looking product to, to send and out. And how long does this germination process take to get to this stage to where they're just barely budding out here? Well, it, we'll kind of go back to when we were actually filling out our little tags of the varieties there. We'll put a date on there and it allows us to kind of track it. Now, certain varieties are going to be faster than others, but on average, we're looking at between the time that we've seeded these products to the time that it actually leaves out of this 
nursery into the greenhouse in about 14 to 16 days. Now, there are a couple varieties that may take upwards of three weeks. So, to get this stage here, this is just under two weeks, huh? Yeah, you got approximately, if you were to look at the, the marker there, we're looking at about the 25th of January that that was seeded. So, I mean, we're approximately about, uh, you know, 14, 15 days on that particular product. And we generally are looking for a fairly good height there, but we've also got a good root system that's underneath on this tray, and that's kind of what we're looking for because those plants, when they hit the hydroponic tables, they have to have a root that actually is down in the water so that water is bathing that root. You don't want to put a plant in that does not have a root system because that plant won't have the ability to be able to wick in uh, moisture up into the plant. So where are these plants putting, uh, getting nutrients from? You haven't started putting your, your solutions in these yet? We actually have there. When we're hand watering these in at that 32 ounces a day, it's actually a nutrient solution that's actually already in the water. It's half strength. And when we feed these plants, they're already getting nutrient solution from the time that they're seeded to the time they actually go out to the greenhouse. Now, once they hit the greenhouse uh, tables, they're actually being fed a full strength nutrient solution 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and that never shuts off. It's pretty amazing just in a couple weeks that these plants have reached this stage of maturity um, and pretty much some of these are almost in some of their baby stages and, and ready to be eaten at this point too. They are. A lot of these varieties that we're growing, uh, whether it be some of the mustards or, or what have you there, these can actually be taken out and served at this particular uh, height there. Even being at a very small like micro height there, you have a tremendous amount of flavor at that height. Uh, sometimes more, so much more so than having a full grown plant. Uh, that can have a tendency to maybe get a little bit bitter as it gets older and maybe not have quite as much flavor. At this size, there you get a tremendous amount of flavor in a very small product. So what do we have to do next? What's our next step in this process? Well, from this stage there, we basically take a look at all the individual varieties that we're growing there and we will take a look at what needs to get out of the nursery area and out into our greenhouse facility. Uh, for instance, like the red oak variety that we just took a look at, that would be a variety that needs to be taken out today and actually planted along with uh, numerous other varieties that we actually have out here that are at, at a size that need to be taken out. And then we can actually show you our process of how they come out of this tray and actually get plugged into our nutrient film technique, which is a type of hydroponic growing that we're doing. Well, excellent. I'm really looking forward to checking out this 18,000 square foot greenhouse of yours. I'm looking forward to showing you. <laughs> All right. Great, we're out in the greenhouse now, and it's time to get our hands dirty. Actually, we're really not gonna get our hands dirty because we're not dealing with dirt. And this is kind of the key of Greg's success here, that these product has no E. coli, no salmonella, it's healthier for you, and a lot better product. What do we have over here? We got the Don, little we, pods. Where we kind of left off with in the house there, we actually had the tray of red oak that we were kind of taking a look at. Uh, these are plugs that actually just got put in yesterday, but I wanted to kind of give you a representation of the material that we're using, the Oasis, is perforated, so it breaks off into a little one-inch square. And the trays that we're growing in actually have a one-inch square that's already been drilled into them. So as we come out, this particular tray accepts that little plug. It just gets dropped straight down into the hole and sits on the bottom of the tray. And that's where the nutrient solution is actually being fed, and it runs along the bottom of that tray and actually is constantly bathing those roots so as that plug gets dropped down into the tray, it is being fed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That water is being heated, so they're getting about a 76 degree water temperature and being fed 24 hours a day. That water is just being gravity fed throughout the length of this tray and then goes into a drain pipe and then return back into our main feeding building where it is heated, filtered, and then added nutrients to it and then it comes right back out. So it's just a closed loop system that continuously feeds these crops in this particular type of tray. The one thing that we really absolutely love about this type of tray is just in this process that we did as far as seeding or plugging, we can actually take apart, if we need to get back to a plug that was had fallen or something that has taken place, we can take the, the plug out that's feeding it and this whole entire tray comes out of the system and allows us to go down to each one of the individual plants. So as we go to harvest, say if these plants are ready to harvest, we literally can just come out, harvest that crop, pull the top off, clean it, put it back in and be ready to pl plug new plants in there as soon as we've harvested the old plants. So it's a, a very nice process to be able to just plug these plants in, let them be fed, and when they're ready to go, we can just pull these right out with roots attached. We do not detach the, the growing medium or the Oasis product. We actually leave it on there with the roots so it's still a living plant when it's actually hitting the doorstep of the restaurants. And it's always going to be fresh. And, you know, as you said, too, that these fertilizers are natural fertilizers. 
um, what makes this a little more unique. And also the process, as you said, that you know it's a closed system. So they're reusing the solution and the chemicals in the water and it's being more sustainable and more efficient. It is, it's, it's really good for us there because it allows us to build a, a batch of fertilizer, feed the plants and it's just continuously filtered and then nutrients added to it so we're not constantly having to dump things. Uh, it gets uh, filtered through and back right back out to the greenhouse and fed to the plants. So it allows us to kind of come out here and do our thing with seeding and plugging and not have to worry so much about uh, constantly out here like feeding plants or hand watering. Uh, the system pretty much takes care of itself. Well, this is a fascinating greenhouse you have here. It's definitely huge and it's a controlled environment. And it is. Uh, really, I, I tell you one thing, there's so many little intricacies that are going on here at all times there that we basically allow a computer to, to run a lot of these things. It could be anything from fans that are ventilating and controlling the humidity uh, to the inside temperatures to uh, we have a swamp cooler that allows us to stay open during the summer months that evaporates moisture in the air and generally lowers the air temperature anywhere from six to eight degrees during the summer months, as well as we can control the temperature of water that's being fed to the roots. So those roots are actually buried under uh, the little tray that they're growing in being fed a cooler temperature. And by exhausting air through here, we keep a good air movement. So it really allows us to control the environment and exactly what the plants are getting at all times. Therefore, we can really try to accelerate that, that crop as it comes through here at a seedling all the way through its adult stage and then back out the door. This stuff is great. Why don't you tell us about some of your you know, claims of fame here and some of the- Well, we've had a, a lot of great opportunities that just kind of have landed in our, uh, our lap there that we just really you know could not you know step away from uh, you know a numerous amount of chefs in town that have gone to the James Beard facility have actually approached us giving us plenty of heads you know heads up say you know look we'd love to take your product in we've used it before we love it we really want to represent it when we go to the, the Beard house so we've done anything from microgreens to some of our baby lettuces to some of our uh, herbs that have gone up there and uh, it's just a great feeling to know people are taking something that they really are proud of and uh, want to use a really fresh product to anything to when uh, Obama had his uh, Kentucky inaugurational ball, uh, they wanted a representation of some Kentucky limestone bib. Uh, and we're growing a Kentucky bib style lettuce and they wanted that product at that inaugurational ball. So I was approached uh, with plenty of time to grow enough for about 800 people. And just a great feeling to be able to, to harvest that product and send it out the door and know that it's uh, going up to feed uh, people at the inaugurational ball so it's uh, any of those opportunities we love to love to jump on them and that has to be really exciting to have your product on national stage and oh sure it's uh, you know to go from uh, just being locally there just trying to kind of get our footstep in the doors there and get uh, chefs excited about what we're doing and then all of a sudden have the opportunity to go uh, you know go someplace like that nationally is so uh, you can't couldn't pass it up no <laughs> it's, it's like a dream, jump, jump. definitely a dream come true all your hard work comes to fruition and you know, and it definitely shows, and especially when you're feeding the President of the United States, your hard work here. Yes, yeah, I know. It's uh, all the guys that work here with me. I can't go without saying the amount of work that they put in, the dedication they put into the job there just shows there. So I'm very grateful for all the people that work here and help, help make this uh, what it is. So we want to continue to grow there and really be able to, you know, be a great, uh, uh, great business in town there and make people happy with what we do there and, you know, put a good product on the table there and, uh, you know, keep, keep doing it the right way. Well, Greg, next time I have a big event at my restaurant, I'm going to give you a call to grow something special for my guests. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to open my own restaurant that serves locally grown food prepared with a creative flair. And thanks to Commonwealth Bank & Trust, my restaurant is now a reality. Commonwealth Bank provided me with all the banking options I needed. They make decisions locally, provide superior service, and best of all, they treat me like family. So whatever your banking needs may be, check out Commonwealth Bank. And rest assured, you'll be in the hands of people who treat you like family. With 30 years experience in the industry, I've seen the evolution of the point of sale system. From the early days of the handwritten checks to now the amazing Aloha system. Here at Berenice, we chose Aloha first of all for its exceptional service, but also its ease of use. We can split checks, even individual items. I can check sales reports, product mix reports. I can literally run the entire restaurant from this one computer. This is why Aloha is our system of choice. Cool Tools is brought to you by The Dine Company.
Welcome to another Cool Tools segment brought to you by The Dying Company. We have the Volraf induction range over here. We're gonna saute a little bit of vegetables. The reason I like this burner so much is that it works by electromagnetic friction. So uh, it's safe to the touch and it's easy to clean. Over here we have our double walled insulated bowls. What's neat about these is that you can heat them or refrigerate them and they'll hold the temperature for hours. It's great for pasta salads, potato salads, especially in the summertime you're worried about things getting a little too warm and it keeps your product sh safe. And here we have our chafing dishes by Volraf. We have our shaped pans to make things a little more elegant for your holiday parties or special caterings. And we just put our hot vegetables in here along with our salmon. And the neat thing about these too is that you could replace them and put ice in there to keep your shrimp cocktail, your oysters on the half shell chilled and keep your food safe. And these are just some of the many cool tools you hear at the Dine Company. For all of your culinary needs, come to the Dine Company at 3110 Preston Highway or check us out at DineCompany.com. differently leads to something exceptional in an absolute world. Welcome to another exceptional experience brought to you by Absolute. Let's see what exceptional cocktail my award-winning bartender Rory is going to shake up for us today. The cocktail we're making today is the cucumber caparosca. What we're going to do is we're going to start with about three slices of cucumber. Put those in our glass. Move on to a little bit of mint. Do about two sprigs on that. And then we're going to go on to the daikon radish sprouts. These are hydroponically grown by Grateful Greens, supplied to us today. We're going to add a little simple syrup, about a half an ounce on that. Half an ounce of lime juice. Going to muddle that up here in our glass. By muddling, I just mean mashing everything together here, releasing the uh, cucumber juice, getting that mint and uh, the daikon worked in here. Gonna add our ice and about an ounce and a half of the absolute pear. Gonna transfer that into our shaker. Give that a nice shake. Get everything melded together pretty well. Transfer that back into our glass. Finish that off with our daikon sprouts. Now that is an exceptional cocktail. Wow, we spent some time at Grateful Green's greenhouse today. We learned some great information of how hydroponics are grown in a healthy, sustainable, and futuristic way. These hydroponic greens are excellent because you can get them all year round. And when Grateful Greens brings this product to my restaurant, it's still living. And that ensures a better product and a longer shelf life. And I thought today I'd create a citrus encrusted halibut. I've topped it with some of the micro sprouts here. I've used the popcorn shoots and beet sprouts. Which is great about these because they carry all the flavor of the adult plant and the vegetable. The halibut served over some of the red sorrel. I've mixed the greens in with a little bit of lemon and olive oil vinaigrette. We have some sun-dried cranberries, toasted hazelnuts, and orange segments. And this is a wonderful dish. And thanks to Bluefin, we have some halibut today. And for this recipe and many more like them, visit BigWorldOfFood.com. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to tune in to the Big World of Food, Sundays, CW Louisville at 530. Until then, I'm your host, Chef John Veronese. And in the meantime, visit me at my restaurant, Veronese, 2106 Frankfurt Avenue.